Hi, I'm Jennifer, and today is the first sewing tutorial for the Emily Brief. Um, in this video, we're going to be using the overlock machine. So you can look down. So we're going to be using the overlock machine to do this one. We're going to be attaching elastic to the inside of the waistline. And this is just using a lingerie elastic like these. So they're nice and stretchy and nice and plush. So we're going to overlock all the seams together and then we do our finishing touches with the zigzag. Okay, so now we're going to pin these together and get them all ready. So it's a lot bigger than the other one. So I'm going to identify the front sides of the fabric. And so this is the front and it kind of curls to the back. So that's how I know which is the front. So I've got my front. What? The tail. Yeah. Okay, then this I have to find the front and find the front. There it is. So now I'm going to pin these pieces together. Now this fabric is a little bit on the slippery side. So you're going to have to be careful that things don't move around too much and uh, make sure your pins are sharp because the pins could end up kind of causing you some problems. Okay, I'm going to flip that over. We're going to then put the lining in here. So the face side of the fabric is now going to go towards the back side of the, the pattern. How do you cut much better? Hmm? Because mommy's been cutting for a really long time. You know, I've been sewing since I was five and I probably cut like you when I was your age. Okay. But I was so, sewing since I was three. Well, okay. Okay, so now we've got here, we've got my right side together and this is the back. So I actually want to do, kind of make sure, so we'll end up looking at it like this. So we want to flip this over so the right sides are facing each other. And then we can pin that. Well, this is just to pin all the crotch parts together. So now we can take that piece, fold that over, fold this one up, and then take your lonely lining and roll it up. So this is the burrito roll. And Emily thinks this is the funniest thing in the world. Oh, that's why you're laughing? Because Sasha's tail? No, I'm thinking okay. of the burrito roll too. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to use my overlock to sew almost this entire pair of underwear. Okay, you can hit stop. Okay, so we've got everything pinned together and we pinned it together in the correct direction so it's easy to pull the pins out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this up so when we actually sew, we want the edge of the stitch to hit where this overlap is right there. Um, so we've got the three layers in here. I also like to make sure my blade is looking straight up. It's, well, it is straight up to make sure that nothing's going to, uh, it's easy to slide it through. Okay. And then you should be cutting off about a quarter of, uh, sorry, an, an eighth of an inch. Although the, with the way my daughter did the cutting, we're cutting off closer to a quarter. She did a real choppy job. Okay. So we got that one done. Now we're going to stitch the other side. Thing. We're going to be get my blade up, makes it easier to get it closer. Okay, and then we're going to take and pull it through. That was actually really easy. And we're just going to take a quick peek at what we did. Everything looks pretty good. What I do want to do is I want to trim up this little spot right in here. And so it has a smoother transition. Over here it looks like we actually have, it's a little bit wider. Kind of hard to cut around the camera. I'm going to just trim this down so the edges are closer to lining up 
So when I ap apply the elastic, it should be easier. here. This looks good. It looks like I could trim off some of the little black over here. And you know, I if you're using like the uh, the rotary cutter, you're going to be a little bit more accurate than this. So they should be pretty close. Okay, there we go. Okay, so in the instructions, I do detail information on how to you want to sew the side seams together and then you sew it in a loop. Now, I attached my elastic that way when I did my boy short video, um, and that's a completely great way to do it, um, but I like to do things a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sew the top and the legs. I'm going to attach the elastic before I actually sew the side seams together. So I'm actually going to be flipping it so I'm working on the back side. And I'm going to be using white elastic so you can actually see what I'm doing um, and then black thread. So um, it, you know, it should be a little bit easier to follow this way. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get my elastic started in the machine. So I'm going to run it and that way I have something to make sure that it's caught. I don't have to worry about trying to catch it on anything. Okay, let's see. First time I'm using this specific uh, front camera over here, so it's in the way of my fabric, but we'll we'll see how that works. So we're going to be cutting off about an eighth of an inch because our seam allowance is three eighths of an inch. Um, you can certainly, if you'd prefer to just have it edge to edge, the top is probably fine, um, but when you get to the legs, you're going to need to make sure that you remove that eighth of an inch, whether you do it before you sew or while you're sewing. And so I'm actually going to give my elastic a little bit of a tug as I go. So not like this, just like a slight tug. And this will help it when I do my multiple stitches. So once I turn it and then do my other stitch, the elastic's slowly going to stretch out and I want to kind of um, bring it back to its original shape. And all the stitches kind of force it to be stretched. So it's just my way of getting it to go back to the normal side. Now you can certainly use the measurements that are on the chart. What you would want to do is for the waist one, you would want to divide that amount by two and then add about, let's see, I think three quarters of an inch for the seam allowance. Um, actually, not only three eighths, three eighths of an inch for seam allowance because we already have that factored in. Um, and then you can actually take and use the exact amount. I prefer to just kind of take it and stretch it. I've done a lot more production sewing and this is kind of more like what we do for production sewing. Okay, so I'm going to keep that elastic running. So you can see it does give a slight bit of um, kind of gathering a little bit, but once we do the next stitch, it's going to be pretty darn flat. We do not want it to be really, really gathered. We just want it to be a little bit. So I'm going to snip my right there. I'm going to do my back just so my back waistline just so I'm kind of like on the same page about what I'm doing okay. and the elastic's already caught in there so then I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a tug as I'm going on it not too much and you'll see me kind of bounce the elastic back and forth sometimes I get a little bit carried away I just try and do a little bit at a time and kind of keep my finger there and then I adjust for the next bit. Let the elastic slide through my fingers. There we go. Okay. So I clip that off. So now we're going to work on the leg opening. So there are, where are we getting started here? Just a huge bundle. And same thing so it's just I'm continuing on with the same steps I never stretch at the very beginning of the stitch I kind of wait until I'm in a little bit before I start doing that otherwise it's too hard to line them up I 
so I'm giving my little bit of a tug. Now, when I get to the, um, the lining area, I actually don't want to tug my elastic at all. It's gonna be a little bit thicker going through there. And we also don't want it to accidentally kind of um, cause any gathering in there because it could just be really uncomfortable. So I'm just gonna try and get everything lined up. It is bulkier, so I'm not pulling at all in this area. So if you are kind of um, sewing in the loop, I would stretch it everywhere except for in this area. Okay, so once we're past that area, we can start our tug again. See, it's going pretty quickly. A lot easier than trying to pin and do a whole bunch of uh, different steps. It's just a little bit more efficient. Okay, so now I'm going to start tugging. I'm also kind of curving it around to the curve of the fabric. Okay, now in this area, this little bump is a little hard. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that this is totally flat and you can see that the lines are not really, the edges are not lined up completely. Um, so I want to assume that, uh, you know, I trimmed off a little bit on one side. This is the side I didn't trim off. So the only thing I'm really going to be trimming off is actually the, the red fabric. I don't want to trim off really any of the black and I just cut my elastic, which is a bad thing to do. I'm coming back and I'm doing my pool. Just doing little sections at a time. And there we go. Okay, so now I can take that elastic off because I'm done with the elastics. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're now going to put the right sides together. So the elastic's facing out. And I want to line this up the best I can, and I'm just going to take two pins. Now we want this pin, so we're going to feed it into the machine. We want the tops to really line up, and where they're lining up is at that 3 8 So I'm going to take here and just kind of come through to kind of force those edges to line up. And at the bottom, it's a little bit easier to, to kind of fake it. Now the fabric stretches, so there is a little bit of give, and because of the way we are constructing this, we'll have a little bit of play if for some reason they don't line up perfectly. So I'm gonna get that one all ready. This is where I definitely get the blade up. Set it so we're gonna cut off that, that eighth of an inch, and then we're just gonna sew our side seam. So the last thing we're going to do is after this is we're actually going to fold the elastic under and do our top stitch. And so it's not perfect. It's probably closer than some of the other ones I've done. Do the other side. Kind of lining it up. Forcing that to stay there. And of course, my fabric's wanting to roll a little bit because I have the pull of the elastic. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. So my blade is already up. So it's easier just to tuck it in there. Okay, so 
so we are done at this machine. We are going to go finish it up on the zigzag. So now I'm over at my machine that is going to do my zigzag stitch. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim up all of my little hanging tails off here. So it's just the four at this point because that's all you really should have. Um, now I'm going to turn it to the right side. So if you look here, well this lines up pretty nicely. And this side's a little bit off. Over here, you know, that one lines up nice and that one's off. The beauty about the way we did this is we can now take and just fold this over and it'll make a smooth edge. So even over here, where it doesn't line up, we can still force it to have a nice edge on the back side, that's where the ugliness is. So you don't have to see that. So, is that out of focus? Okay. Okay, so I'm all ready for my zigzag. So I'm just gonna take, I don't wanna stop, start right at the seam. I'm gonna start just a little bit further from the seam. Seam. Seam, oh, I forgot to put the light on. Do we need that or is that too much? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just get this started and I'm just going to do a zigzag along the edge, holding that elastic down. So here, and I am going to give this a little bit, pull it a little bit, um, and right here we have this bulk bit, and you might hear my cat yelling from the back because she's right behind me. But in general, you're not going to tug it too much. You want to tug it so the fabric lays flat. You don't want to do like this. Um, otherwise, it'll kind of mess up how the stitches will be. So you want them pretty consistent, but I am going to stretch it enough to flatten it out. What? Is it in the wrong angle? Can you please stop making noise? Why don't you pick up all the pins that mommy dropped? I think the magnet is underneath the table, like it, where all my tools are. on that bump. Really? Come on. Yeah. So I have to figure out the hump jumper and how to use it. But I'm doing this uh, thicker kind of... Uh, Emily, please stop that. You're making a lot of noise. Um, I'm using this thicker, like a swim fabric, so it's a little bit chunkier at the corners at our seams. Wait till we get to the legs, that's gonna be fun. Is my cat yelling? <laughs> is, that, is it picking up on the camera? <laughs> okay, so what I like to try and do on the side is I try and make sure the seam stays in the same direction. Otherwise, if you're sewing, um, it could end up causing a little irritation on your side. So I'm gonna try and make sure it stays to the one direction. Emily, please. Summer break. Gotta love it. You can sit there quietly. You too, cat. OK. 
Okay, so now I'm coming over to where the lining is and it's a, definitely a little bit thicker. Um, and once I get over that hump, hopefully it won't be too bad. Kind of forcing it through. Oh, well, it seems to do better. Nice. check the side seam here. Okay, it goes towards the that side. Oh, I already did that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do the same thing twice. side left to do. Okay, we've got that leaning towards that direction. And this is, we're going to be able to correct that a little bit. Got our finished handiwork. Put a couple more threads. Okay, there we go. Now I have a swim swim trunk to go with the swim top I already made. 